Welcome back to Young Business Enthusiast. I'm your guide, Ma'am Giz. Join me again as we journey to the world of problem solving involving fractions, decimals, and percent. In our last video, we discussed about the different conversion techniques which we can use in our own businesses in the near future. Brace yourself, young entrepreneurs, as we embark on a new learning that is giving real-life situations and problem-solving involving fractions, decimals, and percentages. This lesson is an application of the lesson we have discussed during our first video. situations and problem solving involving fractions, decimals, and percentage. Math is an important part in managing business. Let us be familiar with some commonly used fractions and their decimal equivalents to help you with your business tasks. In this lesson, we have the following objectives. Recall the basic operations involving fractions, decimals, and percentages. Give relative situations to illustrate fractions, decimals, and percent. Solve real-life situations and problems involving fractions, decimals, and percentage. Let's formally start our journey. How much do you already know? We have these questions that will help you think about the lesson we are about to learn. Listen and analyze each question carefully. Bring out your pen and paper and let's get started. In a survey about COVID-19, 1 out of 10 Filipinos does not wear his mask when going out of their house. This is from GMA News TV. If this survey is true in all barangays and they surveyed 520 people in Barangay Masipag, how many people of the said barangay follow the protocol of wearing mask? A. 468 persons B. 52 persons C. 5 persons D. 2 persons Correct answer is A. 468 persons. Emily opened her own business with a starting investment of 2,500,000. If every quarter she earns 10% of her total investment, how much will she earn at the end of the year? A. 250,000 pesos B. 500,000 pesos C. 75,000 pesos D. 1 million pesos The correct answer is D. 1 million pesos. Mm -hmm. 
Rudy wants to buy a new car for his family. The car cost 1,250,000 pesos. The company will give him 30% discount if he will pay in cash. How much will Rudy pay if he decided to pay it in cash? A. 375,000 pesos. B. 875,000 pesos. C. 1 million pesos. D. 1,220,000 pesos. The correct answer is B, 875,000 pesos. Romeo sold his house for 4,500,000 pesos. He decided to invest 60% of the total amount in a business. If in his investment, he earns 30% monthly, how much is his monthly earnings? A. 810,000 pesos B. 2,700,000 pesos C. 1,350,000 pesos D. 405,000 pesos The correct answer is A. 110,000 pesos Josie has five children. All are professionals. Each month, each of her children gives her allowance as follows. Child A gives 3,000 pesos. Child B 2,500 pesos Child C 2,000 pesos Child D 1,500 pesos and Child E 3,000 pesos If of the total amount she receives she uses 78% for her medicine how much savings does she have for the entire month? A. 12,000 pesos B. 9,360 pesos C. 2,640 pesos D. 6,720 pesos The correct answer is C, 2,640 pesos. I hope you did well in your pre-test. Good job! If you did not get the correct answer, don't worry, we will deepen your understanding as we go along in this episode. In order for you to understand the concepts of solving real-life situations and problem solving involving fractions, decimals, and percent, let us review the basic concepts of problem solving. This lesson will help you be adept to the knowledge of solving problems. through some problem-solving examples which will help you traverse in the world of problem-solving. Let's start with problems involving fractions and decimals. Mm -hmm. 
Mrs. Dizon sells three-fourths tons of fish per day. In how many days will she be able to sell 12 tons of fish? Let's check this solution. Mrs. Dizon will divide 12 tons by three-fourths. That is, 12 divided by three-fourths is equal to 12 times 4 over 3. Why is that? It is because we use the reciprocal method. That is, 3 fourths will become 4 over 3. And instead of dividing, we will now multiply the numbers. So we get 16 days. Let's have this another example. Jomar earned 1,230 pesos for working 6 hours. How much will he earn if he works 7 and 1 half hours? So we have the given 1,230 pesos as his earnings for 6 hours. The unknown is his earnings for 7 and 1 half hours. So let's have the solution. First, we have to solve for his earnings for every R. That is, 1,230 divided by 6 R's. We get 205 pesos per R. Next, let's solve for his earnings for 7 and 1 half R. So we have 205 pesos times 7 and 1 half R will give us 1,000 537.50 Let us now proceed to the world of problems involving percents. Now, let's proceed to the world of problems involving percent. But what are percents? Percents are used in different real-life situations and problem solving. Here are different applications of percent, which are the most common type. To determine the percent of a number, we have two ways. That is, by changing the percent to fraction or decimal, then multiply the number we want to convert. Note that you can use whichever is easier for you. Remember, the word of means multiply. Let's solve this following example. Example number 1. What is 30% of 60? By using fractions, we have 30% of 60 is equal to 30 over 100, which is the fraction form of 30%, times 60 over 1, which is the fraction form of 60, and we get 18. By using decimal, we have 30% of 60 is equal to 0 0.30, which is the decimal equivalent of 30%, times 60 is equal to 18. Example number 2. What is 85% of 985? By using fraction, we have 85% of 985 is equal to 85 over 100, which is the fraction equivalent of 85% times 985 over 1, which is the fraction equivalent of 985, is equal to 83,725 over 100, which will give us 873.25. By using decimal, we have 85% of 985 is equal to 0 0.85, which is the decimal equivalent of 85, times 985 is equal to 873.25. To find what percent one number is of another number, we use the division method. We simply take the number after the of and divide it into the number next to is. Then, change the answer to a percent. Example number 1. 35 is what percent of 175? We have 35 over 175, 
is equal to 1 fifth. How is that? Getting the LCD of both the numerator and denominator, we get 35. Let's now divide the LCD to both numbers to get 1 over 5. That is, 35 divided by 35 is equal to 1. 175 divided by 35 is equal to 5. Now, let's divide. 1 divided by 5 will give us 0 0.2. But 0 0.2 is in decimal form. We need to make it to percent form. So, 0 0.2 is equal to 20% because 0 0.2 times 100 is equal to 20 and attaching the percent sign. Example number 2. 27 is what percent of 90? 27 divided by 90 is 3 over 10 because their LCD is 9. 27 divided by 9 is 3. 90 divided by 9 is 10. Now, 3 divided by 10 will give us 0 0.3. And 0 0.3 is in decimal form. So let's convert it to percent form. 0 0.3 times 100 is equal to 30. And attach the percent sign. So we get 30%. To find the percent one number is of another number, we can use the equation method, that is, turning the question word for word into an equation. Change percent to decimal or fraction. What will be substituted by the letter X is, is substituted by equal sign, or is substituted by a multiplication. Example number 1. 20 is what percent of 80? We have 20 is equal to x times 80. Dividing both sides by 80, we have 20 over 80 is equal to x times 80 over 80. Now, let's cancel 80. We get 20 over 80 is equal to x. Getting the lowest form of 20 over 80, we have x is equal to 1 fourth, and 1 fourth is equal to 0 0.25. Changing it to percent will give us 25%. Therefore, 20 is 25% of 80. Example number 2. 35 is what percent of 175? 35 is equal to x times 175. Dividing both sides by 175, we get 35 divided by 175 is equal to x times 175 divided by 175. Let's now cancel 175. So we get 35 over 175 is equal to x. We divide both by 35, which is their LCD, so we get 1 fifth is equal to x. So x is equal to 1 fifth, 1 divided by 5 is equal to 0 0.20, converting it to percent, we have 20%. Therefore, 35 is 20% 20 of 175. We can also use the division method to find a number when percent of it is known. Simply take the number of percent, change it into a decimal or fraction, and divide it to the other number. Example number 1. 40 is 20% of one number. 40 is equal to 20% x or 40 over 0 0.20 is equal to 200. We can also solve it as 40 divided by 1 fifth is equal to 40 over 1 times 5 over 1 is equal to 200. Where did we get that 1 fifth? 20 over 100 is equal to 1 fifth. Example number 2. 60 is 50% of what number? We have 60 
is equal to 50% x or 60 over 0 0.50 is equal to 120. Or we can also solve it as 60 divided by 1 half is equal to 60 over 1 times 2 over 1 is equal to 120. Where did we get that 1 half? 50 divided by 100 is equal to 1 half. The proportion method, also called the ease of method, can also be used. To solve, set up a blank proportion and then fill in the empty spaces by using the formula percent number over 100 is equal to is number divided by of number. That is, whatever is next to the percent sign is put over 100. The word what is the unknown or the x. Again, whatever comes immediately after the word of goes on the bottom of one side of the proportion. Whatever is left which comes next to the word is goes on top on one side of the proportion. Example number 1. 20 is what percent of 50? Step 1. X over 100 is equal to is number over of number. Step 2. X over 100 is equal to is number divided by 50. Step 3. X over 100 is equal to 20 over 50. Step 4. X over 100 is equal to 20 over 50 is equal to 40 over 100 is equal to 40%. We use the cross multiplication technique to solve. That is, 50x is equal to 2000. x is equal to 2000 divided by 50, which is equal to 40. Example number 2. 50 is what percent of 200? Our solution, x over 100 is equal to 50 over 200. 200x is equal to 50 times 100. 200x is equal to 5,000. 200 divided by 200x is equal to 5,000 divided by 200. x is equal to 25%. There are three types of proportion formula. The following are the three forms of proportion formula that can be used in solving problems involving fractions, decimal, and percent. Note that B is the base, P is the percent, or sometimes called the proportion, and R is the rate. To solve for the base, use the formula B is equal to P over R. To solve for the percent, use the formula P is equal to R times B. And to solve for the rate, use the formula R is equal to P over B. The following are the important terms that you should remember for you to be able to solve problems involving fractions, decimals, and percent. Base B. This refers to the total amount, original amount, or the whole part. Percent, sometimes called proportion, P. This refers to the part or partial amount of the base. Rate, R. This is the quantity or amount or measure of the proportion to the base. This is usually written in percent, but it may also be a decimal or fraction. Let's solve this example. Lemon, a senior high student in Mandaragat San Miguel Senior High School, has 150 pesos daily allowance. If she saves one-fifth of her allowance, how much savings does she have in a day? For the steps, identify the given. B or the base is 150 pesos. R or the rate is one-fifth. P is the unknown. So let's identify the formula to be used. Since P is the unknown, we use the formula P is equal to R times B. 
substitute the values of the given in the formula. P is equal to 1 fifth times 150 pesos. Perform the operations. P is equal to 1 fifth times 150 pesos is equal to 30 pesos. Make your conclusion. Therefore, lemon saves 30 pesos in a day. Now that we have full knowledge of conversion and its use in problem solving, let us now put our learning into practice. Listen and understand your problems carefully and identify which is the base, the rate, and the percent. An executive in an engineering firm has an average monthly income of 130,000 pesos. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, his monthly income was reduced to 123,500 pesos, which is only 95% of his average monthly income. Identify the base. Identify the rate. Identify the percent. Lemon earns 25,000 pesos monthly and she saves 6,250 pesos every month, which is 25% of her total monthly earnings. Identify the base. Identify the rate. Identify the percent. Connie bought a cell phone which is on sale worth 9,425 pesos. This means she paid 35% less of the regular price which is 14,500 pesos. Identify the base. Identify the rate. Identify the percent. It's about time to put our learnings into practice. Let us now test our problem-solving abilities. In our next activity, read each statement carefully and solve what is being asked in each statement. Write your answers with a complete solution in your notebooks. Ice, a grade 10 student, decided to save one-fourth of her daily allowance. If her daily allowance is 100 pesos, how much will she save per day? Emily has 12 pairs of cloth which she will be using to make curtains for her office. If it takes 3 fourths yard of cloth to make one curtain, how many curtains can she make? Hope took a trip to her school 
five and one half kilometers away from her house. If she rode the chimney for three and three fourths kilometers and walked the rest of the way, how far did she have to walk? Congratulations, young business enthusiast! I believe you have learned a lot about problem solving. As a proof, let us answer the following questions and find out if you are ready to embark to a new lesson involving the knowledge you have learned. Direction. Listen and understand each statement carefully. Solve each number and choose the letter of your answer in your notebooks. Remember to show your complete solution. The Puerto Princesa Underground River is 8.2 kilometers long. As per advice from the DANR, tourists can only explore 4.3 kilometers of the said river. What percent of the Underground River is allowed to be explored? A. 35.26% B. 19.07% C. 52.43% D. 1.907% mm. Rudy decided to build a study table for Emily. He cuts a piece of wood into four pieces of the same length. After he cuts off three feet from one of the pieces, he is left with a piece that is two feet long. What is the length of the piece of wood he started with? A. 3 feet B. 12 feet C. 8 feet D. 20 feet Mandaragat San Miguel Senior High School, a standalone senior high school in Puerto Princesa, has a total of 535 enrollees for the school year 2019-2020. Of this population, 291 are female. What percent of the population is male? A. 0.4561% B. 0.5439% C. 45.61% D. 54.39% Gretel earns 300,000 pesos a year. She spends two-fifths of her salary for food, one-fifth for rent and city services, one-tenth for clothing, 
and 3 over 20 for miscellaneous expenses. How much is her total yearly expenses? A. 45,000 pesos B. 70,000 pesos C. 120,500 pesos D. 255,000 pesos Arpil owns three parcels of land as follows 12 and 1 fourth hectares, 18 and 2 thirds hectares, and 15 and 2 third hectares. If he sells 20 and 3 fourth hectares of his land, how many hectares of his land are left? A. 25 and 5 six hectares. B. 46 and 7 over 12 hectares. C. 51 and 2 thirds hectares. D. 20 and 3 fourths hectares. Congratulations! You were able to finish the task in our lesson. It's time to check all your answers in our day's task. Once again, I am Mom Giz, your academic guide. See you in the next episode for another fun-filled adventure in the world of business math here in Puerto Princesa Dream TV.